I'm going to introduce conservative systems, but before we talk about conservative systems, let's start by analyzing this example system. In this example, we have uh, x dot is equal to sine y, and y dot is equal to um, x minus x cubed, and I'm going to start by identifying all of the fixed points. So to find the fixed points, I set uh, each of these to zero, and I want them to be zero simultaneously. Uh, x dot is zero when sine of y is zero, and y dot is zero when x minus x cubed is zero. And so I'm looking for points where sine y equals zero, meaning that y is equal to n pi, and x minus x cubed equals zero, which means x is either zero or um, one minus x squared is zero. So x is zero or x is positive or negative one. Uh, this creates the set of points uh, 0 comma n pi, where n is an integer, 1 comma n pi, or negative 1 comma n pi. So there's a ton of fixed points of the system, but um, we're going to zoom in at just a couple values of n to try to figure out what's going on. After we identify the fixed points, we want to linearize about each fixed point to try to understand the nature of the fixed point. To create our linearized system, we create new variables, u, which is our distance to, the x value, distance to the x value of the fixed point, and v, which is our distance to the y value of the fixed point. To create uh, the linearized system, we are taking a Taylor expansion um, of this expression about the fixed point, and this expression depends only on y, and it doesn't depend on x, so we can exclude any x deviations from our Taylor expansion for the, for the um, u dot. And so uh, x dot is equal to u dot, and that's because this is a constant. And so u dot is equal to x dot, which is equal to approximately equal to the function evaluated at the fixed point plus the y deviation of the function times the derivative of the function with respect to y evaluated at the fixed point. Um, and then for uh, the, the v, v dot is going to be equal to y dot. Recall that that was x minus x cubed. So v dot, uh, the linearization, will be the value of the function evaluated at the fixed point, that's x star minus x star cubed, plus uh, the x deviation times the derivative of the function with respect to x, plus the y deviation times the derivative with respect to y, but there is there was no y component, and so that piece is zero. And now uh, let's simplify these. To simplify, we need to evaluate these. Uh, the derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of x minus x cubed is 1 minus 3x squared. So u dot is equal to v uh, cosine y star, and this will be a constant, but we're, we have a variety of fixed points, so we'll evaluate it in a little bit. And um, v dot is equal to u times 1 minus 3 x star squared. And so now we can construct um, this linear system at a few of our fixed points. So we have our fixed points, 0 comma n pi, and then plus or minus 1 n pi. And now we are going to compute the linearized system at a variety of the fixed points. Let's start with the 0, n pi fixed point. Okay, so uh, 0, n pi. And um, substituting in, we get u dot equals v uh, cosine of n pi. And suddenly it matters whether n is even or odd because this is either plus or minus 1. And we get v dot is equal to u times 1. So this is equal to u. And this is equal to uh, uh, two cases, um, v or negative v, if v if n is even, negative v if n is odd. Uh, so... If, if the fixed points of the form 0, 2n pi for n an integer, this catches all the even n, then uh, the linearization is u dot equals v, v dot equals u. Um, and if it's the form of the form 0, 2n plus 1 pi, uh, that would create an odd 
number times pi, then we get u dot equals negative v, uh, v dot equals u. And now we have these other cases. Uh, what's happening there? We're getting the same, uh, the same thing in the u dot because we're still taking uh, cosine of y star. Uh, but v dot, uh, recall, okay, so u dot is still equal to v cosine of 2n pi, um, or u dot equals uh, v cosine of 2n pi plus pi. And so this is equal to v, and this other one's equal to negative v. But then v dot was u times 1 minus 3x star squared, which is equal to u times 1 um, minus 3, which is equal to negative 2u. And uh, for the other case, it's also uh, negative 2u. So it turns out we have four different cases of um, four different linear systems arise for all of the different fixed points that we have. For fixed points that are like 0 and then a 2n pi, uh, we have a linear system with a corresponding matrix of 0, 1, 1, 0. And then if instead of 2n pi we have 2n pi plus pi, uh, that changes to 0, negative 1, 1, 0. And then uh, the plus or minus 1 points um, uh, are similar to each other. And when the y value is 2n pi, we have this matrix. And when the y value is 2n pi plus pi, uh, the first row flips. And so now we need to figure out what each of these four types of uh, what each of these four matrices corresponds to in terms of type of fixed point. And uh, then we want to come up with some kind of sketch for the system. I've um, drawn some of the fixed points on. This is negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And this is negative 1 pi, 0 pi, 1 pi, uh, et cetera, on this grid. And we're going to start filling in those their types. So let's start with the type uh, for 0, 0, which is the type for um, 0, 2n pi. And the corresponding matrix was 0, 1, 0. 1, 0. It has a trace of 0, and it has a determinant of um, 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. And so since the determinant is negative, and the determinant is the product of just two eigenvalues, the eigenvalues must have different signs, and thus this is a saddle point. And um, I happen to know for this particular saddle point that uh, the eigen directions are are the 45 degree lines uh, through the center, and that's just because um, 0, 1, 1, 0 actually comes up relatively frequently, and I just turn out to have it memorized. Now let's consider the neighboring fixed points. So this is negative 1, uh, 0, and 1, 0, and so those are the plus or minus 1, 2, n pi type of fixed points. And the matrix was 0, 1, negative 2, 0. And so the trace is 0. And the determinant is 0 minus uh, negative 2, which is positive 2, um, which is greater than 0. Oh, gosh. Uh, this is a center. Um, at least in the linearization, it's a center. And uh, we don't really know what the nonlinear behavior is, but uh, it's probably close to a center. It might be a spiral or something. Anyway, I'm just going to draw in these centers temporarily as placeholders. So the two cases we have left, let's look at these guys on the axis. And this is 0, plus or minus 1. And the matrix that we care about is 0, negative 1, 1, 0. This, again, has trace 0 and it has determinant positive 1, and so that's another ambiguous case. Um, the trace is 0, it's right on the axis, and so the linearization tells us it's a center, but of course it could be a nonlinear spiral uh, that's either stable or unstable, and we just don't know from the linear information. And our, our final fixed points are plus or minus 1, plus or minus pi, and they have this matrix 0, negative 1, negative 2, 0, 
um, the trace is again 0, and now the determinant is uh, negative 2, and so uh, again, um, again, they're a saddle, just like that 0, 0 point, these are saddles, and uh, we can compute their eigenvectors to learn their stable and unstable manifolds, and um, I did that numerically, and I got something like 1 over root 2 comma 1, and so they're slightly steeper uh, than the one at the origin. And I should draw in which is the stable and which is the unstable, and it turns out that the positive positive is inward and the other is outward. Uh, inward, inward, outward outward. And so now I have basically the whole linear story. A picture that looks like this alternates with a picture that looks like this uh, as we go up and down in Y, but I don't really have any good idea of how to connect them, and I don't know whether these centers are for real or whether they should actually be spirals, and I don't really know where these, where the unstable manifold of the saddle node or the stable manifold of the saddle node should connect up. And so uh, now it's time to just use some numerical software. I'm heading to Wolfram Alpha, and I'm going to make the plot there. So I went over to Wolfram Alpha, and I entered stream plot, and I put in the original, uh, original equations, so sine y and x minus x cubed, and I set my x range to include where we know the fixed points are, and I set my y range to match the nine fixed points that we'd been looking at. And so here's the line with the origin, and here's that saddle that was at the origin, and here are, were those things that we found were linear centers. It looks, it looks like they're nonlinear centers as well, and it looks like actually there's a bunch of closed curves in this system. And um, up here we have, uh, it looks like that, this one's, these two are also actually genuinely centers. And then here are our other saddles. So uh, this really begs the question, like, is there some way we could have known that these were going to be actual nonlinear centers and the linearization wasn't just an error? Um, and what's going on with these closed curves, that's a pretty strange and unusual thing for us to see in a fully nonlinear system. Um, we haven't seen a nonlinear system with, these appear to be non-isolated closed curves in that if we start here or if we start a little distance away, both of those initial conditions result in a closed curve. Uh, that's really special. So uh, let's look at what is going on with this system uh, and what mathematically it means to have these closed curves.